All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the funny bases that you see in tRNA. All right, I already mentioned some of them that we have in ribosomal RNA, but we're going to look at tRNA now. These are the funny bases. Now, these are just examples of some. We have 4-thiouridine. We have inosine, which is a, a deaminated adenosine. We have 1-methylguanosine. We have prenylated, uh, we have prenylated nitrogenous bases like this, ribothymidine. We have, actually have thymine in RNA, sometimes pseudouridine, dihydrouridine. I want to go over some of the mechanisms and enzymes by which we make those. Let's talk about how you make pseudouridine. This is a really important one, a very common one in transfer RNA. By the way, it's designated by the symbol Greek letter psi. So when you look here, that's the Greek letter psi for pseudouridine. Pseudouridine is made from uridine that's already in tRNA by the enzyme pseudouridine synthase. All right, so just to talk about what it's doing, here is the uridine right here, or the uracil, exactly. You're going to have the formation of an oxonium intermediate, and when you do the oxonium and make it, you're going to have elimination of the uracil ring. All right. Now, what's going to happen is the uracil ring, notice, is going to rotate. So it's, here's the ring here, but it's going to rotate, meaning it's going to, this O right here, this oxygen is going to turn up right here, and the oxygen right here is going to turn down right there. It's going to rotate. There's some thought that this uh, rotation is catalyzed by an, a critical aspartate residue in the active site. That's still more or less under debate, and it may be the aspartate covalently attaches to the uracil and facilitates its rotation. In any case, what's going to happen is this oxygen carbonyl is going to reform, causing this carbon right here to attack the ribose and eliminate the uh, oxonium intermediate. Now you have this right here. A proton transfer is going to regenerate uh, the resting state of the pyrimidine like this. Okay. And the question is, what's the difference? You may not see a difference immediately. What's the atom in uridine? that connects the uracil to the ribose. It's a nitrogen carbon bond. What's the atom in pseudouridine that connects them? It's two carbons. It's a carbon-carbon bond. All we did in this is we changed the attaching atom from this nitrogen right here to this carbon. So pseudouridine essentially is an isomer. It's a constitutional isomer of um, regular uridine. It just changed the connectivity between the ribose and the pyrimidine. Okay, and it turns out that because we have a nitrogen carbonyl, nitrogen carbonyl, it turns out that unlike most bases, this actually has four hydrogen bond donor and acceptors, unlike three or two like most other uh, bases. For example, we would normally say A and T or A and U have two hydrogen bond donors acceptors and G and C have three. This one actually has four, which can lead to some interesting properties when it bonds uh, with certain um, bases. In fact, pseudouridine, or the psi, is used a lot actually as a wobble base in the anticodon of tRNA. We'll see that occasionally. And it also exists elsewhere in the tRNA molecule. But this is all catalyzed by pseudouridine synthase. All right? In the tRNA molecule, some of the adenines are deaminated. Not all of them, but there are select ones that typically are, and that's catalyzed by an enzyme called adenosine deaminase. And we've seen this enzyme actually in purine metabolism, specifically the degradation. Um, adenosine deaminase can react with free adenosine or adenosine as part of an RNA molecule. Okay. And what it's going to do is take the amine on the top, deaminate it to a carbonyl. And this is the mechanism of how it does it. It turns out there's a zinc coordinated in the active site that also coordinates a hydroxide. And changes in conformation once adenosine binds allows the hydroxide to attack the carbon at the top. And ultimately what that does through a proton transfer is it creates a tetrahedral intermediate. And the tetrahedral intermediate collapses, causing release of ammonia. All right, and hopefully you can follow the mechanism. So the hydroxide attacks this carbon, then we get a proton transfer to this glutamic acid in here, then the tetrahedral intermediate collapses back down and releases the ammonia. All right, and this is your product inosine. You might notice that in although inosine is the, uh, is the nucleotide, the actual nitrogenous base alone would actually be hypoxanthine. All right. But normally, we just refer to it as the nucleotide total, which is inosine. All right. 
So it turns out that this enzyme, adenosine deaminase, is involved in a very deadly um, disease when you have a deficiency of it. It turns out that a deficiency of adenosine deaminase is called severe combined immunodeficiency. Um, and we'll talk about it in uh, a lot in some of the next videos. But suffice it to say right now that a deficiency of the enzyme causes a lot of problems with immune cells. And you tend to not be able to mount immune responses, and so you get very, very sick. All right, But that's a topic of a different video. But suffice it to say, this is how you can take adenosine and use adenosine deaminase while it's attached to the tRNA, part of the tRNA, and deaminate it to make inosine. And inosine is one of our funny bases. All right? We normally think of thymidine or thymine bases as being part of DNA, but it turns out that in, in transfer RNA, sometimes we have thymine. Now, because RNA polymerase cannot add thymines, or at least it really has negligible specificity for thymine, if we want a thymine in RNA, that means we're going to have to do a post-transcriptional modification. And that's done through this enzyme, tRNA uridine methyltransferase. We'll look at the mechanism. There's a lot of methyltransferases, by the way, that have this exact mechanism for pyrimidines. So a cysteine residue is going to attack this carbon, causing formation of the oxyanion. The oxyanion then collapses, causing nucleophilic attack on the methyl group of s methionine. That's actually going to facilitate the methyl group transfer. You see here we have the methyl group, but now we have, uh, we have to put the double bond back where it was. So another base that's part of the enzyme is going to abstract this proton, causing formation of the double bond and elimination of the cysteine which is going to give you thymine. And I just find this reaction very interesting because um, we can have thymine in RNA, specifically tRNA, all right? And it ultimately comes from pre-existing uridine. And we can methylate it using acetylmethionine to make thymidine, which is seen right here in the tRNA. And that is the mechanism of tRNA uridine methyl transferase, all right? All right, so thiodine uridine Thiouridine synthetase, that's this gray enzyme right here, it has a critical cysteine residue, cis-456. In addition to thiouridine synthetase, there's another enzyme that acts in tandem called cysteine sulfur transferase. What this enzyme does is it takes a cysteine residue on it and it transfers the sulfur onto this cysteine of thiouridine synthetase. So now instead of just having a regular cysteine, we have a peroxide cysteine or a thioperoxide cysteine on thiouridine synthetase. By the way, when this cysteine on cysteine sulfur transferase gets rid of that sulfur, it becomes an alanine. Very strange. Okay. In fact, that alanine has to be recycled. Okay, but now we have this thioperoxide that's replaced the cysteine 456. It turns out that also what thiouridine synthetase does is it attaches an AMP onto this oxygen right here of uridine, okay, which activates it. Then once this proton is removed from the sulfur, the sulfur attacks, displacing the adenosine monophosphate. So the adenosine monophosphate will leave, and now you have a thioperoxide linkage between what was the ur uracil and cis-456. And then what's going to happen is another critical cysteine residue, cis-344, is going to attack this sulfur up here, displacing this sulfur, which then forms a double bond down here. And now you have a thioperoxide linkage between cis-456 and cis-344. That will have to be reduced using FAD. Um, and then, but that ultimately generates this molecule, which is called thiouracil, or when part of uh, the tRNA, it's called thiouridine. So this is all catalyzed by thiouridine synthetase. All right, so we take we can take regular uridine and make this atom a sulfur up here. That also gives rise to some interesting properties that you see in transfer RNAs. All right, so very unique mechanism to how we do this. Very interesting tRNA dimethyl allyl transferase. What this enzyme does is it takes the molecule dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate and it transfers the dimethyl allyl part onto adenine amine up here at the top. It's actually going to occur in just a very simple SN2 mechanism. The amine attacks this carbon, loss of pyrophosphate. It's very simple, and that's what this molecule is up here. This is a prenylated adenine. Okay, specifically the prenyl group is a dimethyl allyl group, but essentially it attaches this big bulky 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon dimethyl allyl group onto adenine. And it's catalyzed by tRNA dimethyl allyl transferase in an SN2 fashion. Okay?
It turns out that in some organisms, this can actually be processed further to, on this position of the adenine, we can actually get a thioether moiety. We can actually get a sulfur methyl group right here, which is a thioether. Um, not all organisms do this, but the main thing that we want to focus on is really just this first reaction, because we can actually see a lot of these um, prenylated adenines. So going back to look at this, we saw the synthesis of thiouridine, inosine, pseudouridine, ribothymidine, and these prenylated um, bases right here. The other one's methylguanosine. This is just going to be a very simple N-methyltransferase reaction. We've seen those before. They're very simple SN2 mechanisms. For this one, the dihydrouridine, that's just going to be a uridine reductase. It's going to take uridine, use NADPH, and reduce that double bond. Very simple. So we're not really going to do the mechanisms here, but it's just interesting to see these other five. All right, so that's, how, that's, that's looking at the main funny bases that we have in tRNA. There are others, but these are the main ones that we're concerned about. And now that we've seen these tRNA funny bases, and we've talked about tRNA splicing in the previous videos, we are now going to go into translation. So we're finally at the point when we can talk about this, and we'll start that in the next video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.